Hey, I'm Fernando from Iron Age Audio Works. Today I want to show you how we use oscilloscopes when we test uh, operational amplifiers, especially after we build one and, and want to see what signals would look like going through them. I'm going to show you what, uh, how we use three different types of oscilloscopes, the first one being an analog, Tektronik 465B. I really love this one because of the fact that it has a delayed trigger. It helps me uh, really uh, focus in on specific features of a square wave, and it's really good for high-speed stuff. Uh, then uh, digital Tektronix, uh, which, has, which has also some of the nice features, of one of them being the fact that it can give you measurements directly, such as peak-to-peak -peak, uh, voltages, RMS values, and frequencies. And then finally, this, this little digital oscilloscope here that I got as a gift for Christmas, and it has some really nice features, and it's really affordable, and you can get them on Amazon. So let's see what it looks like. So before we get into the details of the oscilloscope, let me describe to you what we're testing. We're using one of these uh, Five Fish op amp test jigs. On it, we have an M2 uh, operational amplifier designed and made by us at Iron Age Audio Works. And the test jig itself is set up to be an amplifier non-inverting uh, in non-inverting mode. And uh, we're sending, we're going to be sending a, a sine wave and a, and a square wave coming out of a signal generator, and then we're going to now we're going to look at what it looks like on a oscilloscope. For an input signal, we're going to be using a signal coming out of this uh, cron uh, signal generator. We have the ability to change the frequency span. So right now it's set to 20 kilohertz, and we can bring it down to 2,000 kilohertz, or or starting at 20 hertz, uh, or sweep and whatever. And then we're, we're, we will compare. Uh, right now you can see a square wave and or triangle wave or a sine wave. All right, so let's get started with this uh, analog oscilloscope. What I'm showing you on the top trace on channel one is the signal coming out of the signal generator. That same signal is what's being uh, fed into the operational amplifier. Uh, I have one volts per division. Uh, so basically I am sending a two volt peak to peak signal into the operational amplifier. Now coming out, uh, I am actually, I can measure here at 1 volts per division again. It's 1, 2, 3, 4 volts peak to peak. Uh, for the most part, uh, the first thing we do, or, or you would notice uh, when you're testing an, uh, an op amp, is if the op amp is uh, oscillating, you would see either a lot of noise or you would see some high frequency stuff going on um, on, the, on, the, on top of that square wave. So. This operational amplifier is, is faithfully reproducing the signal going into it, with the exception of maybe a little a little strange feature right here on the top left corner of that square wave. Uh, the nice thing about an, an analog amplifier, especially this one that has a delay feature, is that we can really, really zoom in and position that uh, signal into the screen so we can actually see really close what's going on in that corner. So just to make things a little cleaner, I'm going to hide the channel one. We're going to be looking at channel 2 here. We start to get uh, different time steps. I'm going to switch to delay mode and I'm going to move my I'm going to move my signal so I can actually see the feature I'm looking for. So there you go. I didn't really change the the volts per division on the y axis, but I'm now I'm really really starting to get a really fast sampling rate. I'm probably around. A, I'm, I'm around a, a half a microsecond here. And uh, one of the things that you can immediately see is, on a square wave, you would expect to have a step change from low voltage to high voltage. And here we don't have a a, a step change or a straight vertical line. We actually have a uh, a slanted line. And uh, you can you can determine what the slew rate of the operational amplifier is by measuring the rise over run. Um, and then you can see this uh, this little wave here, you know, there's a little overshoot and then it comes down and tries to compensate and settle. Uh, there's a lot of papers been written on this, uh, the, the, the Gibbons phenomenon. Uh, you can see those links down in the comments. Uh, but it's really nice because what we will be able to do now is vary the frequency and vary the voltage that we're sending to the operational amplifier and you'll see these features start to change. So to appreciate that a little better, let me get you back to where we can see a, a square wave. Uh, what I'm going to do now is increase the voltage that we're sending in. 
and as we increase the voltage, you can see that the, the amount of overshoot, the whole wave is being amplified, but the amount of overshoot now exceeds the top of the square wave. So down here, at a low voltage, uh, two volts peak to peak coming out of the op amp, the overshoot does not exceed the, the top of the wave, but as we increase, you can see that it is in fact uh, changing a little bit. So, I always have a hard time finding my, my waves when, when we zoom in too fast. So here, you can see that uh, there is, it looks a little different than it did before. Another interesting thing that you'll see is that the frequency of that high speed uh, signal on top of the square wave is also, it's also becoming faster. So those are cool features that you would only be able to see on a, on a really high end uh, analog, uh, digital oscilloscope or an analog, or an analog amplifier like this. Um, there you go. So now I'm going to recreate basically what we saw in the analog amplifier on the digital amp, uh, on the digital uh, oscilloscope. Uh, I also uh, found this one on a dumpster. You just have to know which dumpsters to look into, I guess. Um, and um, it has some advantages and some disadvantages. The disadvantage is you're limited by the number of, of, of lines that you have on the screen. And being a digital, it's converting an analog signal into a digital signal. Um, this uh, this oscope is maybe you know 12 years old and and uh, I know today Tektronix makes uh, scopes with a, a lot of higher capabilities. But the, the nice thing is you know it, it's it's still very useful uh, on the top trace. That's channel one. That's what I'm sending to the op amp coming out of the signal generator. And on channel two, you can see the uh, the signal coming back. So here once again uh, there's no oscillation. Um, and you can see the faithful reproduction of the square wave with that, you know, with noticing that feature on the top left there. You saw how far I was able to get into the details of what that looked like on the analog. And uh, you, you can do really well here as well on, on this digital. Uh, but in my opinion, I, I like the analog look. It, it seems a little steadier, especially when you go into like very high frequency stuff. You, your resolution on your digital screen might not be good enough. You might get some aliasing and losing some, some signals, but that will be something that you really experience when you're looking more of like a, a sine wave or periodic signals like that, where the aliasing are, and, and the frame rate will really maybe hide some, some things that are really happening that you just won't be able to see. But for the most part, digital scope works really well. Same thing with uh, varying the amplitude uh, right now, uh, I'll start moving the amplitude here, and you can see how how the response through the operational amplifier basically just changes the characteristic of that curve. Uh, so just wanted to show you what it looked like on this uh, digital scope. So now I wanted to show you this little digital oscilloscope that I got as a gift. It's very capable uh, as far as its performance. It's showing two channels on the top channel. I'm, I'm looking at the signal coming out of the signal generator and then the bottom channel, the yellow trace, that has the signal coming out of the op amp. It takes a little getting used to because it doesn't have all the knobs that our conventional oscilloscope has. All it does is has these two, uh, these two little dials here and it takes a little getting used to. But uh, I can change the, the amplitude of the waveform or the, the scale of the measurement and then I can move the the trace down so that it's not overlaid on top of the other and let me change the time base and you can see once again that it uh, being a digital oscilloscope and not having as fast as a sampling rate as, a, as the one I showed you previously uh, you're losing some of the features up here on this corner but it still does a pretty good job at, at revealing the fact that it's not a perfect square wave and uh, you could probably measure the slew rate off of this and then also see what the, what the, um, be able to characterize what the square wave looks like. So um, a, lot of, um, a lot of features in this little uh, oscilloscope, it also has a signal generator built into itself and 
It also logs data, so you can actually extract the data as a CSV file and then put it into Excel if you want to make some nice graphs. So I just wanted to show you um, more or less how we use these oscilloscopes and the fact that you know obviously this operational amplifier is not oscillating so you can actually get to measure some of the features of the square wave coming out. And next I'm going to show you what uh, an oscillating up amp looks like. So now I want to show you what an oscillating off amp looks like when you look at it through a scope. Right now the power supply is off so there's no there's no signal coming out of the op amp but as soon as I turn it on you're going to see that that uh, intense noise that I mentioned before. Um, I'm going to show you on, on all three scopes what it looks like. I basically don't want to leave it on too long because it, it, it will get hot. Uh, you can see that there is a the resemblance of the square wave but it just looks like it's out of focus and it's really because of that uh, that noise. Uh, that, that's a lot of noise going on. If, if you would were to actually hook us up to a speaker, you would you would hear some nasty noise coming out, and uh, that's when you know you got something wrong. In this case, we have a bad transistor that we overloaded one day, and uh, it's just a good example now of of what it looks like when you have an oscillating op amp on a scope.